Join Dr. Zach Williams and Flat Creek Baptist Church as we dive deeper into God's Word in this podcast titled New Horizons. Thank you for joining me once again on New Horizons. I am so thankful that you make a daily decision to join with me as we dive deeper into God's Word together. I know how difficult life can be, and I understand that the world we live in is moving at a faster pace than ever before. So I completely understand the sacrifice that you make each day to tune in to this daily devotional series. I became a pastor in April of 2011. Over the years, I have had many different questions about life and how the Bible applies to various topics. It has always amazed me that no matter where God places me, people seem to always have the same basic questions. Questions pertaining to God, life, death, evil, prosperity, the end times, etc. It seems as if these questions are ingrained in the human heart, regardless of age, race, or sex. I love when people begin to ask questions such as these because it proves to me that God is working in their lives and they are searching for truth. As believers in Christ, we have the truth. The truth is found in the Word of God. You will remember that Paul would write in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. With that being said, no matter what questions we may have, we should always come to the Bible to see what it has to say about any given topic. There is a great falling away from the Bible in our day and age. However, I, along with many other pastors, And many Christians around the world still run to the Bible with our questions seeking answers from God. With that being said, I will periodically use this devotional time to address tough questions pertaining to the Scriptures and as well confront many of the issues of our day from a biblical perspective. As I stated a moment ago, as a pastor, I am always asked numerous questions from people who are searching for answers. One of the main questions I receive stems from John 14 and verse 6. It's in this verse of Scripture that Jesus states, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. From this verse stems two separate questions, which I will seek to give an answer to. I will pose both questions to you at this moment. However, I will save the second question and answer for tomorrow's devotional. The two questions which stem from this verse of Scripture are this. Number one, if Jesus is the only way, and he lived 2,000 years ago, then how were people before Jesus made right with God. Second question, is Jesus really the only way to be saved? If Jesus is the only way to God and he lived 2,000 years ago, then how were people before Jesus made right with God? Have you ever pondered that question before? It's actually a great question. It's one that I'm sure that you have personally asked or been asked at some time in the past. To answer this question, we must first give an answer to another subsequent question. How are people saved today? This question always brings in a variety of responses. However, most people answer that question by going directly to their works, what they have done. However, let me remind you that Romans chapter 4 and verse 1 and verse number 2 says, What then can we say about Abraham, our physical ancestor has found? If Abraham was justified by his works, he has something to brag about, but not before God. Here, Paul teaches the church at Rome, If anyone could be justified by their works, it would be Abraham. However, not even Abraham can thump his chest and brag about his works before God and be found justified because of them. 
So if it's not by works that a person is saved, how is a person saved and made right with God? Paul would explain in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For you were saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Here Paul says, Salvation is not from your works. However, salvation comes by grace through faith. This answers the question of how a person is saved today. They are saved. They are reconciled. They are made right with God by faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it was Peter that would stand before the mighty Sanhedrin, that great Jewish court, and say, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to people, and we must be saved by it. And Paul would elaborate and say in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith in Jesus is salvation. So we come full circle to answer the question of how people were saved before Jesus. Very simple. They were saved the same way we are saved, by faith. In the text I read a moment ago in Romans, where it spoke of Abraham being unjustified by his works, it says further, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. How was Abraham saved? What made him have a right relationship with God? Faith. But you say, Jesus had not come. What did he have faith in? Friends, today we look back at Jesus. We look at Jesus today through the lens of his finished work. Those in the Old Testament had the promise of the coming Messiah. He was foretold in many different places and foreshadowed symb symbolically in many different texts. And the Old Testament saints looked forward in faith to the coming Messiah who would defeat sin and death and reconcile all people to God. Although they never saw this promise with their own eyes, it was their faith that justified them in the eyes of God. And it's their faith that promises us that one day we will see them all in heaven.